Ever since Signalis' release, there have been conversations about switching the perspective of the game. And now, thanks to the diligent work of the Signalis modding community, there is a method to achieve just that. Before I continue, here are some quick notes and disclaimers. This guide is a guide on how to modify your file so that way the game can be in third or first person mode temporarily. If you die while in this state or unload the save, it will all have to be done over again from scratch. It's annoying, we know. However, the Signalis modding community is working hard to make this into an actual working mod that people will be able to download. And when that mod is completed, you won't have to set this up every single time, the mod will just do it for you. I will be sure to let you all know when that's released, it's just not out right now, and I figured you guys would enjoy the ability to at least play around with first person or third person or know how it works prior to the mod's release. One more very important thing, this guide was produced by IQ. This is a massive deal, and his work is greatly appreciated. Thanks to them, we are now significantly closer to a first and third person mod, and for the moment, lots of normal people can just boot up the game and get their own you know, chance to play around in first and third person prior to the mod's release. With no more delay, let's just get right into this. <laughs> start, you're going to have to do a lot to do this, and in doing so you will need to be aware that it will not be perfect, nor will it save, and dying will reset it. With those disclaimers out of the way, let's get into this. First up, we need debug to be enabled. If you do not already have debug enabled due to previous modding efforts, there is a new method. Apparently hitting F7 and typing Osrunen will make you take some damage and will enable debug. If you do not take damage and it doesn't work because some people have been reporting issues with it, I have a link to the debug menu guide using hex code, which is what I use, below. Now that you have debug, you're going to need to enable tank controls. Do this by typing F7 and typing Panzer. On top of this, you're going to want to disable enemy rendering with Veil. And optionally, you can disable volumetric effects. This will increase the quality of some rooms and hurt the quality of others, so it is optional. Also optional, if you're afraid of dying and resetting the whole progress, because that's what will happen if you die, you can either enable Hestier to disable damage to you, or Buddha to disable dying. Both work, both will prevent, you know, the whole resetting of scene. With our working debug done, we must now download some other softwares in order to get to modding. First, we gotta download Melon Loader. Apniok from Unoff wrote an amazing guide for that, so I will be using that guide here. So you'll need to install Melon Loader's automatic installer, a link to which I'll have below, and then run that. From here, you want to select the signalis.exe file that will fill in any info you're gonna need for Melon Loader. When this is done, a mods folder will be created, and any mods that use Melon Loader will be .dll files that you're going to be able to place into that mods folder. We aren't quite done with softwares yet, as we now need Unity Explorer for Melon Loader. This will be linked below. You're going to want to download it and import the files. Within these files are going to be a mods folder and a user libs folder. Move the DLL files within the mods folder into the Melon Loader mods folder, and copy the files within the user libs folder into your Melon Loader user libs folder. This will make it possible for you to use Unity Explorer, which is going to be vital for this whole first-person, third-person experience. With all that done, the basics for modding is finished, allowing us all to actually start working on, you know, modifying your save to get the desired results. Return to Signalis. If you closed it, double-check that the changes you made in debug still hold, and from here, load the desired scene that you want to play with the modified camera. This can easily be done with Intruder in debug or load scene in Unity Explorer. Remember that loading a different scene is going to reset all of your progress from this point forward. So, first, navigate the prereqs, angled camera rig, local space, main camera, and then in Object Explorer, you're going to want to disable angled camera control in main camera component list. Then, open unityengine.camera component for main camera. Then, you're going to want to open unityengine.camera component for the main camera. Find camera.orthographic property for this and set it to false, then you're going to want to hit apply. Next, navigate to prerequisites, angled camera rig, local space, main camera, VHS UI. Open unityengine.camera, component for VHS UI, and find camera.orthographic property for this camera. Set it to false and hit apply. That's the basics. From here, you're going to want to either go to first or third person. Either way, you're going to need to have those basics. For first person though, you're going to want to navigate the prerequisites, character origin, character root, LED default, meta rig, root, hips, spine, chest, neck, head. 
Then from head, you're going to copy the Unity Engine.transform component for the head to the Unity Explorer clipboard by clicking the little copy button in the top right. Then navigate to Prerex, Angled Camera Rig, Local Space, Main Camera, and open the Unity Engine.transform component for the main camera. Paste the previously copied Unity Engine.transform component that you've got from the head, as well as transform.parent. You can find this option by scrolling down to transform.parent and hitting the green paste word on the left of this option. What this is going to do is move the camera so that way it moves with your movements. Navigating within the same attributes, set the transform.local rotation for the main camera under Unity Engine.transform to 0090. Now set the transform.local position for main camera Unity Engine.transform to 0, 0, 0, 0.35. These stats can be changed according to your liking. However, these are our suggestions to get the experience that work the way you work best, as different settings work for different guns in different ways. This setting collection, though, looks quite cool, and here's a short demonstration of it. Next, we're going to attempt a third person variant to this mod. You're going to have to do the basics again. If you already haven't done them, go back to that part of the video and quickly do it. For the first, navigate to Prerex, Character Origin, Character Root, and copy the Unity Engine.transform component for Character Root to the Unity Explorer clipboard. Then proceed to navigate to Prerequisites, Angled Camera Rig, Local Space, Main Camera. Open Unity Engine.transform component for this main camera and paste the previously copied Unity Engine.transform component that you've got from the character root as a transform parent for the main camera Unity Engine.transform. Finally, set transform.local position for main camera Unity Engine.transform to 3, 7.5, negative 5. Set transform.local rotation for this camera to Unity Engine.transform to 5. 355 five, and 0. And with that, you're going to have a third person mode enabled, and it's going to give the game a classic dead space type appearance. These in general look amazing, and here's a quick demonstration of the third person variant. Now, IQ has offered some fixes to the problems they have noticed in these settings, and these fixes will make some of the minor nuances that occur with this, you know, go away and make the experience more pleasant overall. First, we have the SMG position fix. This will make it so the SMG appears in the proper location in first person. To achieve this, first navigate to prerequisites, character origin, character root, LED default, meta rig, root, hips, spine, chest, shoulder R, Upper Arm R, Forearm R, Hand R, Weapon Mount, Weapons, SMG. Open Unity Engine.transform component for SMG. Set Transform.local position for the SMG in Unity Engine.transform to negative 0 0.821, negative 0 0.022, negative 0 0.108. And this will make it so the SMG actually works in the proper location in first person. For the next fix, we have a disable of the muzzle flash. For find every instance of muzzle pivot for every weapon Elster can use, navigate to its muzzle child, then muzzle's halo child, and disable every such instance of the halo, and it will disable muzzle flash. Finally, one can disable auto aim if they so want. Navigate the prereqs, character origin, character root, LA default, open player aim component for LA default, set player aim dot assist angle property for player aim to zero navigate to prereqs character origin character root no rot iso fixed crosshair open the automatic pop-up component for crosshair 
find automatic pop-up dot pop property for crosshair automatic pop-up and you're going to set this to false and hit apply and what this will do is disable it now auto aim will not pop up and try and help you out and with that there is now a guide to enable first person and third person should the player want it these variations offer a brand new way to experience Ignalis, and I suggest everyone drop a playthrough in both variants. Just try it. It's a lot of fun. If this guide is too much for you, then the good news is that hopefully in the next couple of weeks, or if we're unlucky, months, a mod variant of this will be created, which will bundle all this work into C-sharp coding, making it automatically work upon boot up, meaning the player will not have to do anything. The Signalis modding community is not large. But huge props to IQ and Apneoc, who have spent a large amount of time working on mods to try and get something out to the people. And while this result is certainly amazing, I'm excited to see what the both of them produce in the future. So that's everything I've got for you guys today. Thank you all, and hopefully you all enjoy your experience with this mode. Till next time, though, this has been Christopher Beast. Ciao.